Hello again everyone and welcome back to another video. Um, today we're going to be doing a dotty French manicure. So I'm going to be using like a berry purple colour. So is this one from Blue Sky, <clears throat> which is really pretty. And I'm going to be using white from Lavender Violets. And I'm going to be doing a dotty one. Now this actual design I've already done um, on a client. Well, the client was my mum actually. And I got a lot of comments on it and lots of people asking me how I did it and they thought it was really pretty and effective. So I thought I'll show you guys today. So first of all, we're going to be doing, oh, and I've also got some of these I'm going to be using as well. Uh, nail pearls. Um, hopefully you can see them. Let's just, can you see them? Pretty, aren't they? And it, they make this set look really classy. Um, so I got these from Amazon. So I will link those down below. Um, and also I'm going to be using some Mylar Flakes, which are these gorgeous things. Um, I can't link that one down below because I've got so many glitters and I've got no bloody idea where I got them from. So, uh, yeah, if ever I do link any glitters, then you're very lucky because maybe there were a new set that came um, within a day or two of me doing the video. But hey, anyway, all of the glitters, you know, most of my glitters I get from AliExpress or... Uh, Amazon usually um, so yeah so let's go in with a let's go for this one first so this will be your maybe pointer finger yeah pointer finger so look at this color isn't that just stunning let's bring it over here so you can see now there's lots of ways to do French, and there's lots of ways to do a French smile line. Um, and I've already done a video on this, which you can see um, if you look in my video section. So, I mean, I don't struggle too much with smile lines, really. Um, but then I've done nail art since I was 16, and I'm now 40. So, um, yeah, I... But I've done a video to help you guys if you do struggle. Obviously, you can see the uh, white tack there. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get a little bit on my palette so that it will help me. And a little um, detailer brush. Again, I'm not sure where this one came from. Probably from Amazon or AliExpress. In fact, I think it might be a CADS one, actually, this one. And then um, you just go in and perfect your smile line. That's how I do it anyway. So, I mean, happy for anybody to tell me that they have a better way or a trick or a hack. Just comment down below and, um, yeah, happy to check it out. I actually did this set on, um, like I said, on my mum and her nails were smaller. In fact, she'd got some that were long and some that were short and she didn't want to um, have extensions on. Sorry, I'm looking for a clean-up brush now. I don't know where it's gone. Um, so my mum likes to just have natural nails. But it still looks cool, even with some short. Sorry, I sound weird. I've got a brush in my mouth. A brush in my mouth, yes. Just looking at that edge there, look. Sorry, I'm going out of shot now. And I'm talking like I've got a lisp. in the lamp to go and we are going to do a full nail with this colour Pretty colour, isn't it? I love watching a colour go on nails. Is that just me? Or do you guys like it too? Let me know. And then I am going to do a another no, not that one full colour. That one's gonna be French. I'm gonna do this one full colour. Actually, let's do the French on this one. Because I did two French of these. 
I might change this slightly actually, I might do this. Mm. I could be letting myself in for a fail here. But I'm gonna do this like that instead, just for a change. I didn't do it this way on my mum. On my mum's I did um, two rounded French. Ugh, let me just wipe that off before I get it everywhere. And all over my nice white background. Just gonna go in and perfect this line. Now I liked, in this particular one, um, in this particular set, I did these were clear tips and um, I left the nail clear so you could see the actual nail bed. And uh, I thought it looked really pretty. I know a lot of people use uh, pink when they're doing French. And you, you know, you can absolutely do that if that's what you want to do, if that's the kind of look that you're going for. Um, I just wanted, I just wanted, um, sorry, that's my cushion, if you can hear that noise. Um, yeah, I just wanted um, it clear, because I think it looks nice. Pop that in for 60 seconds, and then I'm gonna do another one which is full colour, because this one, either this one or the other one is going to be, uh, is going to have mile off flakes on, which looks so pretty. Okay, I'm going to pop that little butte in as well, and the other one should be ready by now. It is. So we can go in with another coat once we've given it a wipe with some isopropyl alcohol. I try not to put too much on these damn things because they fall off the blue tack. Also, another reason why I think I'm okay with lines is because I have done eyeliner on my eyes, liquid light eyeliner, for years, since I was about 16. So I always do a liquid line on the top of my eye. So I know that it's important when you're doing to anchor. So like, you know, I'm anchoring here, look, when I'm doing this. You need to have something to lean on when you're doing artwork like this. Otherwise, you sort of going like this all over the place and just wobbling everywhere like a deranged alcoholic that's withdrawing or something yeah so that's that let's just give that a little tidy up quickly so all i'm using is a little bit of isopropyl alcohol on this flat brush here look I'm wiping that i don't need all that alcohol on there and then you can literally just go in with the edge and tidy that up and make it more crisp. See? Pop that in the lamp. And there's my other ones. Come on, turn on the little lamp. Ugh. It's got a sensor on it and sometimes it doesn't like it if it's not my hand that's in there. Or client's hand. Let's do another coat on this one. Sorry if I'm being quiet. I tend to be quiet when I am concentrating, when I'm doing lines and stuff. I also have to keep checking the camera to make sure that I'm in shot. I think it's fine. Oh. Nope. I don't think that line's too bad anyway, actually. Let's clean it up a little bit. Only because I'm a perfectionist, because quite frankly, it's not too bad, even without having to do that. I'm 
probably going to make it look worse, actually, doing this. Never mind. There we go. Let's pop it in. Right, I have my other ones here. So, um, let's see. This is the middle one. What we got here? Let me just wipe the other ones off. I want one of them to be plain. I can't remember which size these ones are now. I think that one's a bigger one. So we've got pinky. We've got pinky and perky. No, we haven't got pinky and perky. Either way, they're going to need another coat, aren't they? Does anybody remember pinky and perky? Show my age now. I used to watch that when I was a kid. Mickey Mouse is still around there, isn't he? I mean, my kids watch that. Mickey Mouse Clubhouse. All of that business. What's the other one that they watch now? In the Night Garden. Babies like that, don't they? Sorry, I'm rambling. Back to the nails. Anyway, second coat on this is just lovely, isn't it? Look how stunning that is. And the great thing about this particular design is I don't think it has a particular season either because I think it's such a rich purple that you could have it in any season, I think. Right, I want one of my Frenchies out. And I'm going to do some dots. So I need some white on my palette. Again, my trusty Lavender Violets brand. And I'm going to use a dotting tool. Ofs. Give that a swipe. Now, where is my dotting tool? I have some smaller ones and some larger ones, so we'll see how we get on. Now, the trick with dots is... You need to make sure that you you don't just randomly dot them. So I like to start here. And you need to make sure that they're spaced even. Oh, Jesus. Let's wipe that off and start again. Right. That's not how you do it. Let's try again. You need to make sure that they're evenly spaced and evenly sized. Now, as you go round to the smaller sides of the nail, you could make the dot smaller if you wanted. So now I've got my first line. I then like to go in between. So point it with this one so in between the dots so in between those two in between those two but making sure that it's still in a line like this yeah and then I do the same on the other side before I move on to the next line like that actually I probably need another one up here and then we're going to need to get some more here on this edge. That one there. Doesn't matter if you don't get the full um, dot on there because it still looks just as effective like that look. Pretty cute, huh? Pop that in the lamp. I'm going to do, sorry, my arm was in the way then. We're going to do the same with this one. Let's give it a quick swipe. Not too sure I'm going to get an effective picture of these when they're on because it's a clear tip. <laughs> oh, I didn't think about that, did I? Oh, well. I'm sure we'll be fine. Right, dots for this one. I'm going to, again, use that as my middle anchor point. So 
as if I would normally. So I'm just going to go in and do three dots. Obviously, if the tip was bigger or your French area was bigger, it would be more than three dots. But it just so happens, as it turns out on this particular set, that it's three dots in the middle. I keep going back in and, and you know, popping that on there to get some more paint on. And then we carry on going up in between. Oh, oh dear. I didn't mean to do that. I didn't mean to put that there. Quickly clean up. There we go. I mean, once you've got one line in and you're happy with it, you could flash cure it if you wanted um, so that you don't muck the other ones up if you do make a mistake. And you can use one of these torch things, look. LED torch. You pick them up really cheap from Amazon. They're just a couple of quid. Now, uh, trying to see what I'm doing here because it's harder when you're filming. One more here, I think. Like that. Woohoo! Pop that in. For 60 seconds. And then, this is now out. So that one's going to stay as it is. I'm going to swipe it and top coat. Now, it is going to feel slightly bumpy where here where these dots are. Um, so if you wanted to, you could encapsulate if that's what you fancy doing. Or just make sure when you top coat, you turn your client's hand upside down. And put a generous layer of top coat on. And then they won't feel it. So a generous layer going on. Hold that upside down before I put it in the lamp and popping it in. And again, the same with this one. Quick swipe because those dots are a little bit tacky. Plenty of top coat. Making sure to cut the free edges and the side walls upside down for a few seconds. And into the lamp we go. Now I've got these ones. Now again I've got the number again haven't I as to which one I'm doing with the Mylar flakes. I think I don't know whether this one's the bigger one or not. I think that's the bigger one. I think that's the one I'm doing for the, um, yeah. I did the pink, I think that's the pinky. Is that the pinky? I don't know. I want the bigger one anyway for, um, let me see if it's upside down. Can't see now because that's one. Right. That one's for my pearls and that one's for the Mylar flakes. So let's do the Mylar flakes. Let's get these little buttes out. A little bit of no wipey top coat. Not too much, because we don't want to make it bulky, because it's just literally just to help these Mylar flakes stick. And I want a little brush, which I didn't get out. Any brush will do. And then make sure your uh, brush is a little bit damp. That's what I like to do. And then just pop them on randomly, wherever you fancy. And they look gorgeous on this particular colour. And because they're so small, you can pat them in. So it doesn't make it too bulky. And it doesn't matter if you've got some gaps, because, you know, that's the whole point of this. Like, it's meant to just look gorgeous without trying too hard. Look, pop that in, 
60 seconds and then we are going to now do our gems now i think i don't think usually i use um, a pickup tool and i can't find the thing it's like a wax pickup tool and i don't know where it's gone anyway so i'm gonna have to use tweezers for this Sorry, I just knocked the lamp flying. Now, I'm not sure what size I want to use. Um, because I just want to do some around the top. So I just want to do like a cuff at the top. So maybe I'll do a bigger one in the middle and then a few around the sides. Let's open these up and have a look. I don't want it to be too big though. Oh, I can't get this open. Ah! I have to use my teeth sorry right so i might just use one of those bigger ones there now what i like to use for my um gems first is this by cjp it's called gripper glue and it's fantastic stuff it really really is so i'm just going to get that ready and i'm going to get a couple of, oops throwing them everywhere let's just see if one of these, are good, before I put the glue on, I just want to see if these are going to be too big or not big enough on there. Yeah, I think that's going to be fine, isn't it, on there. So we'll go with... Um, maybe, maybe a bigger one, actually. Let's pick these out, because I want two of those. Don't I? Either side. And I make them smaller as I go round. Do I want a bigger one? Mm, how big? I didn't do them this big on my mum because obviously on real nails, um, you won't catch them um, because of the way that I pop them in the nail. But anyway, uh, but for this, I like to do a little bit more. So, uh, mm, sorry, I'm faffing now. I'm looking for a bigger one. Maybe that one. Yeah, there we go. Right, I'm gonna put that one in the middle. Sorry, I'm out of shot now again. So it's just a little bit of gripper glue. And you kind of have to work quick because it does, it's rapid, it really is. Pop that on the nail, like that. And then I'm gonna put the other two to the side. But I'm going to put glue one at a time because I know me and like if these things don't work properly which they aren't because they're upside down they're bum up not tummy up then your glue starts to dry and I don't want that Obvs. I don't know why I keep saying that right let's pop that one on there because I'm obviously not down with the kids I'm too old to be down with the kids oh will you Make sure that you're happy with the placement before they dry. And I might get another, another two, maybe another two. Yeah, I think we could. Let's see what size we're going to go for. Let's try these baby ones here. Let's get a couple of those out. Let's see if they look good next to it. Let's pick one up. Yeah, perfecto. A little bit there. Pick the little guy up, pop him on. Make sure you're happy with the placement. Can you see that? I can't see it. My own head's in the way. And then one this side. Make sure it's level with the other side, which it's not. It's too far down. Let's move them up a little bit. And there we go. So I'll show you what I'm going to do now with this. Obviously, there's lots of glue. Oh, I don't know where that's gone now. Right, let's get that out of the way. 
So, with top coat, normally when you're doing gems and stuff, you don't tend to um, put it over um, the gems because you don't want them to... Um, what am I saying? What am I saying? You don't want to take the sparkle off it <laughs> when you're using, using Swarovski. I can never say it right. Um, so you tend to um, go around the edges. But here's what we do. Um, we pop this and we butt it right up to the gems. If you can see, butt it right up and push that, push that gel in between. And then that's going to stop them catching in your hair because we all hate that. Now it's a little bit trickier on the edge here. And obviously if you were, let me let me change that actually. If you were doing this on a client, you would struggle because you'd be near the cuticle edge. So get a little bit of top coat and a little teeny tiny detailer brush. And then you can do the cuticle area like this. And make sure that you're getting in between all of the little gems all around the edges like so and then your client is not going to get them stuck in their hair and nor are they going to get them stuck in anything else and they're not going to ping off and that is also a good way of securing the gems on the nail as well so that they won't lose them that's my foolproof way and i use that all the time and they last until they come for their fill after sometimes after four weeks and then um, they're still on. And we have to prise them off with um, cuticle nippers. An old pair, obviously, I don't want to be blunting the ones that I use all the time. So that's that top coated. I'll pop that in the lamp. And then I think we've top coated the other ones. Yes, we did. I just need to top coat the Mylar one. I mean, you can leave, if, if your client likes them sugared and textured and they like the feel, then great, you can you can go ahead. Um, make sure, let me just make sure that um, it's nice and smooth on the edges before I top coat, actually. So this is what I do with a client as well. I just go in with a file, just gently, to make sure that you get these edges. It's a bit harder to do on these stands because my fingers get in the way. And I'll pop off if I'm not careful. So yeah, there's that. Um, right, I need my glittery top coat that I use. And plenty of it because um, although we're not encapsulating, we do need, which I'm, this is running out, we do need to make sure that we've got plenty on. Come on. all nice and smooth now so make sure you put plenty of top coat on and turn your client's hand upside down just for a few seconds i'd use this trick all of the time and it's really good now if when it comes out the lamp you can still feel it and it's still lumpy and bumpy then give it a quick buff and top coat again for the second time and then you should be good to go Um, yeah, I don't think they're not, they are going to stick on here, but they're not going to look very good on here because where's my Mylar one? I think that's the big one. I've got them mixed up there. That's the middle one. Is it? No. Oh, I don't know. Even I'm stuck now. Anyway. Look, cute, isn't it? So guys, thanks once again for joining me on this video. And if you've got any tips and tricks you'd like to see in future videos, please let me know. And if you liked this video, please give me a thumbs up. Thank you very much. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.